we have some some juicy topics today as always to to dig deep into uh, especially for you guys really looking to to get things started and you're you're asking some questions as to you know whether uh, you have to go down the path everybody else is doing what kind of things you you can be offering what to be looking at um i think we're going to be turning over quite a few stones today yeah and then the the whole topic i mean really the, the whole gist of it and, and and what we want you to walk away from this free life training with is an agency that can cut through the noise that can cut through the bullshit of a space that look i don't believe the agency space is saturated but if you're going to be the typical person who's going to offer you know facebook ads to e-com clients you can get in the queue right so we're going to show you how you know we're able to cut through the noise how um, you know, my students are able to build an agency that can grow exponentially uh, from the start, from the get-go without having too many clients, right? We're going to show you how we can do that from the very start. And it comes down to building a monopoly agency and a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about in this free training. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Tony has prepared a, a few uh, little slides for us to follow along. Um, and there's three main topics that we're going to cover. So uh, Tony can, can do the honors of uh, introducing those. Absolutely um can we see yeah let me put it on the stream okay awesome Here we go so yeah today we're really covering uh picking your core agency service right and this goes hand in hand with topics topics we've already spoken about before including um actually picking your niche uh, how to actually deliver services uh but this time we're really digging deep into uh, the services themselves, because as Jaime was saying, uh, offering Facebook ads for e-com agencies is, you know, one in 10,000. Yeah. Whereas, and by the way, uh, we're not saying, we're not saying Facebook ads, like uh, a lot of people may be listening in and they, they may be thinking, oh shit, you know, Facebook ads doesn't work, right? No, it's not that it's, it's just structuring it in the right way and making sure that the core, you know, the target audience to which we are going to. I can actually resonate with it and, and, and can actually say, oh, this is the Facebook ad agency that I want, right? As opposed to, you know, being one in a million different other people, yeah, people offering the exact same service, but also to the exact same audience. Yeah, and showing you that there are other things you can do, right? If you don't want to, to do Facebook, um, there are other ways to go down as well. And in terms of tackling this, we, we really wanted to break down uh, three different things. The first one being uh, one service fallacy, and we'll go uh, right into that as soon as we're done here. Then the difference between social returns and revenue-driven services. Um, and then finally, just covering a bit on how much you actually need to know uh, to be able to, to deliver these services. Um, but starting off with the one service fallacy, right? And I mean, this a uh, bit of a complex name for not that complex of, of a topic, but avoiding marriage while reducing complexity. Right. And what I really wanted to get at with this is I've seen a lot of people ask me, like, do I need to offer um, this extreme thing where I'm offering Facebook, Google, TikTok, um, all these things packaged into one? Um, or am I going to be like extremely just going for this one offer and refusing to touch anything else? Um, and it really ties into something Jaime preaches a lot about, which is the 360 approach. Um, so yeah, man, you want to take it away on Let, this let's specifically? let's do it. Let's do it because I think there's a lot of uh, to uh, there's a lot of things to unpack, and and I think a lot of people are gonna walk away from this answer knowing okay, it's not you know it's not binary, it's not yes or no, it's not black or white, it's not Facebook ads or nothing, right? Uh, or, or some other service. It's it's a mixture of both, and and that's this is specifically for ecom clients, right? Um, it can can you apply this to uh, you know? restaurants can you apply this to a uh, real estate yes but why would you be in those uh, in those niches that that would be my question right but regardless of anything this is particularly for e-com clients and the reason why that is is because at the end of the day if we're servicing e-com clients what we're trying to do is we're trying to get someone to take out their uh, card and pay for something online right a lot of people think oh e-com is just this very complex thing and you should stay away from it and I say, no, don't do it, right? There's a lot of benefits to e-com. And in fact, there's a little bit of a higher bar to entry, which is good. So you don't get as many tire kickers. But to really make sure that you deliver an incredible service, you need to know about the stuff that I'm going to that I'm going to be talking about. And what that is, is making sure that you understand that when it comes to, e uh, to service in e-com clients, you need to understand the whole e-com funnel, 
right? From the first click to the last per, uh, to, to the last click, which is the purchase, right? And so it's not just about running traffic. A lot of people are completely blinded by their service, right? They go ahead and they, they think they're a Facebook ads agency and they won't look at anything else, right? Maybe they've been told by someone that if you do something else, that increases complexity and you should stay, you know, focus on one single thing. There's, there's truth to that, but you need to match, you know, you need to have a 360 approach. And what I mean by that is, for e-com specifically, right? If you're, let's just say you're running Facebook or Google ads, right? That is your flagship service. And then we'll talk about just in just a bit about what a flagship offer is, right? But if your flagship offer is Facebook and Google ads, you shouldn't just look at Facebook and Google ads as your medium to convert clients. And what I mean by that is, sure, that is your way of, of driving traffic, right? And that is the, the, the number one thing you're getting paid for, right? But the problem is if you drive that traffic to a shitty landing page, that, that landing page is not going to convert. Right, um, oh, that traffic is not going to convert. Right, if that landing page is not optimized, that traffic is not going to convert. Right, not only that, but if if what you know, if if the client that you're working with, right, has told you that they want to advertise an offer, and and you know that the offer sucks, maybe you don't know, but you have a, a a bit of a feeling that the offer sucks and it's just not good enough for cold audience in a market that is pretty saturated, like I don't know, skincare, something like that. Right, um, then you need to make sure that you have input on the core offer as well. One of the things that I do that Antonio does that my students do. And so we get involved on the uh, selection process for the core offer for our clients, right? We don't just come into the ecosystem and we're told what to do. We don't do that. We're an agency owner. We're on the same level in terms of entrepreneurship as, as they are in terms of like decision making when it comes to our area of, of expertise and our influence, right? So we come in as also, you know, valued consultants and we tell them, hey, look, I, John, I think, you know, this offer is solid, but let's, let's leave this offer. As a, as a cross sell or as an upsell, or maybe further down the line, right? For the core offer, we need to have something that really sticks, something that is a, that has a viral component, something that you have content about, right? Something that, you know, has insane reviews, something that, you know, we can really put out into the market and really have people resonate with it, right? It must have a perceived value, not just the value in, 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 in and of itself, but maybe it can be a little bundle, right? Or it can be, you know, something plus... Uh, and you know an ebook or something like that, right? There must be perceived value to it that increases the the, the total value of those products, right? Um, and so the the core selection process is, is the is incredibly vital. Not only that, but we also look at, you know, the the for example, we take a look at a, a little bit about email marketing, right? Uh, we we uh, get involved on the ad creation um, uh, element, right? Uh, and so this there's all these components that that uh, come into play, right? To really create a cohesive e-com strategy, we get involved on that, right? We give them free consultations. And so wrapping this whole thing up, right? If you want to get results for e-com clients, you need to have that 360 approach where it's not just about your flagship service, right? If you're offering Facebook ads, it's not just about running traffic, right? It's about also knowing how do we, how do we, um, drive this traffic and get it to convert on a landing page, right? How do we drive the traffic and get them to buy this core offer? Because this core offer is really fucking solid, right? You know, how do I uh, tell my client what type of content to create for my ads, right? How, do I have that sort of expertise? Okay. And so it's having that 360 uh, approach. Now, having said that, what I recommend for the the the, uh, the service, right? The, the way to structure is, yes, you want to have a flagship, uh, a flagship service, right? Um, and that typically is either paid ads or, or direct marketing. You, you want to pick one of the two, uh, one of the, the two, right? It cannot be something that is not super revenue uh, driven. And we'll talk more about that in just a second, right? But it has to be something that has a clear return, whether it's email marketing, paid ads, which could be Facebook and Google ads, it could be TikTok ads or, you know, a newer platform, for example, um, something that is revenue driven, okay? And once you've gotten through the door and you're giving them these free consultations that I just talked about, the key then is you can cross sell them to these other services later down the line, Right? It is honestly such an easy upsell, and we've got uh, you know students every you know every single uh, week in the uh, in the community, right? Uh, talking about how they upsold someone to uh, a client to a, a landing page, right? Or how they upsold a client to email marketing, or how they upsold a client to um, a viral ecom ad creation, right? We have we have those students uh, talking about their upsells because it is honestly such an easy cross sell and upsell to other services once you've gotten through the door with a flagship service, right? And then you can see you're getting them results. Once they can see that you have expertise on other components of the e funnel, it's just such an easy upsell. Um, and so to wrap it up, right? It's incredibly important to reduce complexity by picking a flagship offer, but it doesn't stop there, right? We have to have that 360 approach, right? And that 360 approach lends very, very well um, to us cross-selling them to other services once we have them through the door with our flagship offer. Right, and we can sell them to a bunch of different uh, services within that that encompass the e funnel. Whether it's viral e-commerce creation, 
whether it's landing page optimization, com conversion rate optimization, checkout process optimization, email marketing, SMS marketing, uh, chatbots, et cetera, et cetera. Those all work tremendously well as a cross zone. Okay. Um, and on the topic, if you guys want to hear more about the mentorship and, and what we do and, and how we, we can help you scale the agency, I will leave a link uh, on, on this post uh, where you guys can go ahead, book an, uh, an obligation call with, with the team. We, we can see where you're at. We can see um, how we can help you. And if it's a good fit, we can we can take it a step further. But Tony, that is uh, that 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 really is is the the false answer to uh, to the false question, a juicy topic, which is making sure that you click a, fa a flagship service, but it doesn't stop there. Have any three sixty approach? Hundred percent. That three sixty approach, as as I mentioned before as well, is I think one of the the biggest things that that you pro preach, which is really like avoiding marriage to this one flagship offer as well. Um, so that you're not just stuck on, oh, I am a Facebook ads agency. No, you're an e-commerce growth agency, right? You're structuring yourself in a way where you're coming in and really helping with the, the whole approach to online sales and not just, you know, driving traffic in this one way and, you know, not worrying about the rest because you're only responsible for this. Um, and the way you're able to structure yourself and your agency to come in and offer this kind of value ends up building like the relationship that ends up lasting longer, ends up giving you a deal that can bring in more money uh, further down the line. Um, so the, the advantages to really following these steps that Jaime uh, outlined and being able to cross sell other things is really how, how you can position yourself best. Yeah, I, th I think that's such an important topic, right? Um... One of the things that I really like that you, that you said is one, the identity side of things, right? It seems dumb, but like just telling yourself, like reframing, right? From being a agency owner or Facebook ads expert to an e-com growth hacker, expert, whatever you want to call yourself, right? Uh, at the end of the day, we're growing e-com brands. Uh, we're not running Facebook ads. We're growing e-com brands. Like at the end of the day, and, and it's not because you know, we want to grow e-commerce. It's because at the end of the day, the client, that's what the client is going to be, be uh, ju uh, judge you on, right? It's not going to be the number of visitors you're driving to their website. They don't really give a shit, right? It could be 300, it could be 3000, right? If you convert the same amount of people, they don't really care, right? They care about the conversions. And so just the, the, the identity part is important. And another thing that you, that you said that is absolutely vital is for people to understand that in the, the model that I just talked about, the 360 approach, right? Because we're thinking long-term with these clients and because e-commerce lends itself so well to the long game, right? When we come in and we we have uh, uh, such a, uh, an understanding and uh, impact and influence on the different components of the e-commerce sales funnel, whether it's email marketing, the ad creation, the copy, the landing page, all this stuff, right? They see us and, and, and especially when we start cross-selling them to these other services and they start paying us uh, good money for it, right? And we have almost full control of the whole funnel, they start seeing us as, as a indispensable part of, of the, the, the equation, right? And the switching cost increases so freaking much. Why would they get rid of Tony if Tony is running their ads, doing their email marketing, give them consultations, free consultations on their, their product launches and their offers, right? Why would they would need to hire a, a, a media buyer? They would need to hire an email marketer. They would need to have a, 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 an external marketing consultant that knows their shit, right? Just so much complexity. And not only that, but these people would, would probably not have half of the understanding that Tony already does about the brand, right? Yeah. And so that's the first thing, the switching cost. And then the second thing is, you know, in, in the program, we also talk about equity deals, right? We talk about taking a percentage of their business later down the line, right? And that lends itself so well when you have control of the 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 uh, their business of their in a, in a marketing sense, right? We, you have control of their marketing because who who else would they give? part of the business too. If you are the rainmaker, if you make it rain for them, if you are the, the person that's bringing in most of the customers, right? They're, they're going to be happy, or at least you can force them, right? They're, but they're going to be happy to give you part of the business uh, in equity, right? Later down the line, once you have them through the door, maybe a year, a year and a half, uh, you have this long relationship with them. They're going to be super happy uh, giving you a part of, of, of the, the total business, which is really the long, long uh, play uh, when it comes to, uh, to e-commerce. 100%. And that's like the, as Jaime was saying, the, the long play, right? Like not optimizing for uh, just getting a deal through the door and trying to do as little as you can to be able to make it viable, but also to go the long way to be able to bring them leads, to be able to increase um, the metrics you're, you're really looking for. Um, but based on, on something Jaime was mentioning there and something that's really important to touch as well as the different types of services. Right. So we've touched here on um, really the revenue driven side of things, which include the Facebook ads, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, email marketing, uh, SMS, all these things. Right. But on the other hand, there's also uh, the the social side of things. Right. So social media management uh, under an umbrella. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
what this really leads itself to is people confusing themselves, di differentiating between like making a post and creating ads that drive traffic somewhere. Um, and we just really wanted to touch on the difference between the two, uh, how you could even incorporate one uh, into the other and like how you want to be positioning yourself uh, as an agency owner. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. Look, it's again, it's not, it's not one or the other, right? I've, I've got uh, people that come to me and they tell me, look, uh, I'm actually really passionate about, um, you know, running, running accounts, and and that's something that, that I'm great at, right? And I tell them, cool, but you're not going to differentiate yourself in that uh, with the service, right? You can differentiate yourself with a specific sub niche, right? So let's just say you pick, uh, you're going to help yoga brands, okay, all over the world. You can help yoga brands. And, and that's what's going to be one of the differentiators, right? That's what's going to be one of the components of your monopoly agency. It's not going to be the fact that you offer social media management because quite frankly, social media management is never going to set you apart, right? And so because the subniche already sets you apart, right? The the, the logical, um, the logical uh, step is to offer something that that where the money is very clear. The return is very clear, right? And the only way to have a very clear return is just simple. It's either paid ads or even marketing, right? Uh, and so the, the, that's really the importance of that flagship service being one of those, uh, uh, you know, one of those services, right? When it comes to paid ads, it could be Google and Facebook ads, it could be TikTok ads, it could be Pinterest ads, it could be Snapchat ads, you could get a bit more creative with this new platforms. Um, when it comes to direct marketing, mainly email, right? But you have to have one of those offers as a flagship because at the end of the day, that's what's going to give you longevity, right? When it comes to a service, you want it to be a service that has a clear return and has a fast feedback loop. Okay. So uh, the, the problem with social media man management is it has a fast feedback loop, right? Because you can get likes, comments, and all this stuff, but it doesn't have the clear return, right? Mm -hmm. Same way with, for example, SEO, right? A lot of people may say, well, Jaime, SEO is already is also a revenue-driven service, right? Like you're getting more traffic and more traffic converts and blah, 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 right? Cool, but it, ha it doesn't have a fast feedback loop, right? And so uh, clients have to wait a long time to see any type of return, right? And as humans, we are naturally just impatient. Okay. Uh, and so that is why it doesn't really work as a flagship service. Having said that, as a revenue driven, uh, as a flagship service, uh, it can be revenue driven, but as what we just spoke about, you know, cross selling them to other services, right? When you come, when, when you already have them through the door, social media, social media management can be a great addition, right? To, to the equation, right? Because now you have control over uh, their, their content on social media. Maybe you're really good at generating organic leads. And, and at warming up organic leads, right? You're really good at, you know, driving people to a Facebook group and from there converting them to to uh, calls or whatever it is, right? Maybe you're really good at that as well. And you can generate the money through, through that, right? That is a much more appealing offer as a cross-sell, okay? So social return services do have a space. There's a space for them, just not as a flagship because as a flagship, it's just, it's almost like selling, um, what's a good expression? Like selling... I don't know. Uh, what's a good expression? Like selling water to, uh, I don't know, someone who just caught that, caught that. <laughs> but <laughs> essentially, it's a really hard sell, right? And so you want to sell yeah. things that are easy, that just go, okay? And 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 the things that that go are things that are suited and personalized to a specific sub niche within ecom, but also that have a very clear return. And that is why you need to uh, you need to pay, uh, pick up either paid ads or direct marketing, and then as a, a cross sell, uh, there's space for a social return. 100%. I mean, just to, to really be clear and, um, you know, cut our, our loose ends, like the flagship offer that we're talking about is really like the offer that you're going to pitch uh, directly to the prospect, right? When you're signing them on for as a client, like this is the one that it's going to be the sell, right? So you're not going to come in and offer social media management off the bat. So you offer your revenue driven service as your flagship as the thing that's coming in. And then once you're in the up upsells and cross sells, Jaime is talking about is really going to be what um, you're able to add on to what's already there, right? So you mm -hmm. have your initial um, fee that you're getting paid for your flagship offer, and then while adding these cross sells and upsells, you're able to increase the fee that you're getting paid uh, because you're bringing in more value, you're doing more more work. But that's not the work that was able to get your foot in through the door in the first place. That's the work that you're able to add on to the value you're already bringing through your main offer. One hundred percent. And one of the things that, that I'll add to that to to also just make it very clear: the client, most often than not, they don't give a shit if you're doing Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, TikTok ads, or whatever you're doing, right? Like, don't. The, the thing is, like, the flagship offer is not really Facebook ads and Google ads, right? The flagship offer is ecom growth, and our our uh, growth vehicle is 
you know, Facebook and Google ads or whatever you end up picking, right? The client doesn't really give a shit what you do, right? Or, or how you do it. It's just the growth vehicle is never going to be the growth. The thing that's going to grow the most and where there's going to be direct, you know, clear return is never going to be social media management or any social return service, right? So just to, to also make that clear and build on top of, of what Antonio uh, just very correctly said, right? Is, is, is the fact that, you know, flagship offer, yes, that, but, but, but more than that is, is our growth vehicle, right? That's what the client cares about. Um, the, you're not going to sell them because you're the Facebook ads guy. You're not, you know, TikTok ads is not the one thing that's going to make them go, ah, okay, cool. You know, this guy does TikTok ads. It may a little bit with the newer platforms, there may be a, a little bit more novelty and, and curiosity uh, for maybe those brands that already have Facebook ads uh, in place, but it's not, it's not what's going to be the, the differentiating thing. Um, so that's another, you know, important point to, to make clear. A hundred percent. And, um, that kind of leads us to, to the last point, um, on that, which is, you know, you're, you have this flagship offer, you have your upsells, your, your cross sells, everything you want to include. And then the last part really is like, how much do you really need to know? Right. Because I've had a lot of people come to me this year and be like, oh yeah, I'm looking to start my agency, but I'm just trying to learn a lot about Facebook ads. I'm just trying to learn a lot about Google ads or uh, TikTok or whatever it is. And these people often end up procrastinating their start time so much because they think that they need to consume all this information and be like this complete pro where in truth, they're not really going to be able to get to the level where they they're able to execute extremely well until they've actually executed and tried things out for themselves. Yeah. Right. So I wanted to pitch the question to you, like how much do you really need to know to get started? If any at all. So this will be, one of the questions that we cover on the on the next training, but I will give a a, a little teaser. It's just, you know, um, yeah, I'll, I'll give a, a little teaser. But the the main thing that that people need to understand is that uh, yeah, so selling ice to Esk Eskimos. That that was the expression that I was looking yeah. for. So I appreciate it. Uh, I cannot see Keep you guys' name on on the software that we're using, but uh, whatever your name is, appreciate it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, a lot of people think that they need to have, you know, so much on this on 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 the service, and and um, to an extent, I actually do believe that you need to know your shit, right? However, what is knowing your shit? Okay, um, that that that's really the question here, because what we focus on, for example, on the mentorship, is not becoming a Facebook ads expert, because that comes with time. It's like you're not going to play learn how to play tennis by watching a bunch of videos. Uh, or having one-to-one -one conversations about how to play tennis, right? It's, it's about getting in the field, right? And so where we come in and how we really take things up, on, up a notch and, and really the knowledge that's going to have the most leverage, right, is coming in more as, as the strategies, okay? So we understand how to piece together an econ funnel, okay, to make sure that that funnel converts. That's where we come in as the agency owner, right? And so a lot of people think, well, if you're delegating the media buying, what are you doing, right, on the service side of things? Um, you know, let alone obviously we're doing communication, we're building systems and processes, but on the service side of things, a lot, right? We're coming in as the strategist. And what that means for me, and 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 you know, what I teach in, in the mentorship as well is essentially we are the, the 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 people that actually set the strategy in place, right? We pick the core offer. We oftentimes pick the angles that we want to we want to actually launch for the uh for, for that core offer right for cold audiences right we often uh build up the, the funnel whether it's a vsl right whether it's we're going straight to a product page and you know maybe we have long form copy on that landing page right um we typically pick the creatives that, that we we uh we launch for these ads right we typically go ahead and create uh you know or, or we consult uh, or we give consultations for the client on the email flows that they should create on the back end right we typically think about the cross sales and upsells that that funnel should have right? We often think about uh, this sort of copy, right? We, we often write the copy for, for the angles that we want to shoot for this uh, specific, um, for, for that specific uh, core offer. So what do we not do? Mainly the, the optimization of the ads, you know, knowing when to scale, knowing when to kill, uh, even though we cover that, right? Th th those are the type of things that even though if you have knowledge on, you have to execute on to really take this up level, right? Uh, and anyone who tells you otherwise, it's just lying to you. However, that's not what's going to make the that that's not what's going to have the biggest leverage because you are never going to be as good as someone as someone who's been scaling ads and and really looking at ads their whole uh, you know their whole 
life for 10 years. Make sense? Uh, and so we come in more, more as a strategist because the problem with a lot of media buyers is they're great at one single thing at, 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 at scaling, optimizing, you know, picking a uh, great inter, you know, the, the interest target, et cetera, et cetera. But they're also good at, at um, having a 30,000 feet view and knowing where to drive traffic to at picking a core offer, right? They're not so good at, at um, the, the marketing side of things. They're really good at the media buying side of things. Uh, and so we mainly come in as a strategist and as a strategist, the reason why it has more leverage is because those that, that type of knowledge is was the knowledge that actually moves the needle forward because it's the sort of knowledge that resonates more with our prospects on sales goals, right? The prospect doesn't know, doesn't want to know when the prospect when, when they should scale or kill an ad, right? They want to know what sort of strategy do they need to really take them their, their brand to a whole new level. And when you can jump on a sales call and tell them, here, you know, here's the sort of strategy that we're going to use. Here's the core offer that we should launch for, for our cold audience. Here are the sort of uh, the sort of angles that you could try. Here are the sort of email marketing flows that, that we could test. That knowledge is going to have a lot more leverage because it's going to secure that client for you, right? Not only that, but the process to results that you build, right? Whether, you know, for example, uh, in, in the mentorship, right, we have uh, the, the seven day um, um, kickoff process, right? The, the combustion, the 30 day combustion process, the 90 day propulsion, right? That sort of knowledge, the process to results, again, it's going to have way more leverage than knowing when to go and kill ads. Makes sense. Um, so that's a little bit about that question. Uh, I'm seeing another question here. Jaime, can you give us some resources to learn econ funnels uh, and offers? I mean, there's going to be a lot of, of stuff on the on the free Facebook community. But if if you guys are, you know, for those of you who are watching this and, and you're generally uh, generally um, excited and and, and generally um, serious about growth and and, and taking uh, the econ agency up a notch, the, the the best resource is always going to be the mentorship, right? Uh, and so I'm going to leave um, a link below where you guys can can go ahead and and um, apply for the mentorship. Uh, but if if you can do that, then I think the free content on on the free, on the community um, on the on my YouTube channel is a, is, a, is a good place to 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 really start thinking about these things. Um, so yeah, I think that's a I think that's a wrap.